Hello guys and welcome to another thermal expansion tutorial video. In this one I will show you how to use the phytogenic insulator to make a, a tree farm. It doesn't look like a tree farm but it is. And since I've hooked it up to some dynamos this is actually a tree power plant or a tree farm power plant perhaps you can call it. And uh, well, it looks very complex, uh, and in some ways it is because it's not a one block power plant as uh, or a one block tree farm as some other mods have. But I am using a sapling and I'm growing it with fertilizer to grow wood. That's the basic idea. But it's the production of fertilizer that makes this build slightly more complex. And I have to say this, that depending on your mod pack, mod selection, uh, there might be other ways to get fertilizers. Perhaps some of them are compatible in basic thermal expansion. Only the Phytogrow is uh, accepted. But you might have something else. But anyway, um, so that's one part, the fertilizer. And also what we need to make fertilizer is sand, niter and slag. Back, actually it's only niter and slag but since I'm using sand to get uh, to get slag and I'm using sandstone to get sand and niter, well depending on your mod pack you might uh, have other requirements. But niter is required and uh, well you can get it from uh, Railcroft for example but in this setup, I'm getting it from sandstone. Sandstone in the pulverizer will give me two sand and a 40% chance to get niter, which is pretty good. So let's run that, we'll get niter, and that's good. The sand will be here. And on this side, I'm pulverizing ores. This will give me of course various types of pulverized metals. I'm running this with sand in the induction smelter and let's see if I can... can we do like this? Pulverizer will give us iron, uh, two of them, and then 10% chance of a bonus output that goes for all these ores. And then running that with sand will give us iron ingot and slag. So we will get a, quite a lot of slag from uh, from doing this and uh, of course you might have other mods that will give you slag from other parts uh, of, or, or machines. But anyway, those are the two here. Um, so let's come back to this side in a bit once I've explained everything. So let's go back to the insulator I have upgraded this with the sapling infuser. It's required to be able to grow trees. And now we need the sapling, of course, and we need fight to grow. And since it comes in three variants, you can use the basic one. I did that first and it seems to be working quite, quite well, but I think we get a much more outcome uh, if we enhance it. So that's why I'm using the third tier fluxed fighter grow. So we'll come back to that as well because it's over here and I want to go this way. But anyway, from fluxed fighter grow in the sapling infuser, we'll get 18 wood. So we get lots of wood from one fighter grow and one sapling. And you can add augments to this you can use uh, let's see we're using that one we can use this one non-fertilizer inputs are not consumed which means that with the sapling will stay in there you only need one sapling but since we get 150 percent saplings we will get a surplus of saplings anyway which you can burn or do whatever with in this setup, I'm actually just sending the sapling here and then I'm outputting the sapling and 
this filter makes it short so we have 32 of them in here. Same with the flexed fight to grow. And you can also add this part if you well if you have one sapling that will never be consumed you can just nullify, nullify the secondary or you can use some nutrition recoveries a chance to not consume fertilizer that will save you the trouble of making one more saving energy and making this more efficient but this one will uh, require additional energy so uh, I haven't done the math feel free to do it it's quite a complex uh, setup uh, to calculate so fe feel free to do it but we require water I just have an aqueous emulator here if that wasn't obvious already so we send our oak woods over to this furnace simply make charcoal of it and all of these machines, I think they're all upgraded to the uh, resonant tier. It will only make them faster, but it's not really required. But I think these parts can be good to have fast. So here we have lots of charcoal. Now it's everything is stopped because our energy cell is full or at the level I want it to be. So this will stay here. We will output on the right side over here and I placed this vacuum item duct on this side which means that this input will be prioritized over this one so in here another pulverizer we had one over uh, there and there we have a third here this will only make pulverized charcoal and nothing else and have a stack in this buffer it will out to output into this fabricator. And here is where we craft the fight to grow, of course. And with a simple filter here, I use resonant everywhere, but I only want need this part. Keep a stack uh, that is eight, or keep eight of them in here. So that one will make sure that when this, this will only output if we have less than eight. And the same thing goes on this side. Slag and nitre, eight of each coming from here. Okay. So with that, we can actually have a stack of fight to grow here. I think you get 16 of each time. So you will have almost a stack here at all times. Same thing again. We out to output on this side over to this... Um, fluid transposer we get a stack in here and we are infusing it with sap or not infusing we are filling it i guess you can say so sap fight to grow rich fight to grow and some energy of course that's pretty cheap and then you have some energy here to get this is 8000 rf to get the flexed version and this is only 1600 and the sap is free it comes from here i don't think you need 10 of these um, but it wasn't too big of a problem to just set them up in creative you just need enough to get this one running uh, so 200 ml buckets will give you the rich one and then oh, as i said an energetic infuser here only to get the fluxed from rich and I have pretty much the same setup everywhere uh, with input and out to output and then filter and keep keep a stack size. And this server will make it sure so that these ones won't end up in here. So this one will grow slightly all the time, keep a track of that, and otherwise it will stop. Uh, and we'll come back to that final part over there. In just a bit to demonstrate uh, I'll just show how, you, how I set this up this energy cell is now where I want it to be I have this comparator input on this re relay if we are uh, let's, let's see five or higher that means like five fifteenths um, 
out of 50 million or something like that. Then we output a high signal and on this, uh, this is inverted, so it will send out a low signal. And that means that high here means that we're running. So if I just bump this up, that means that we want more energy in this one. You can see that we're directly consuming just a bit because everything started here. We're starting here and we are sending charcoal from here into these steam dynamos. This one is high, this one is outputting. Steam dynamo with this boiler conversion. This will give us 480 millibuckets per tick of steam and that makes it so with two steam dynamos equipped with turbine conversion and also a few catalyzer or three just to get more energy out of it. And this will give us, well, let's see, 480 times 2 RF per tick into this energy cell minus what we're consuming to, uh, to craft all the uh, phytogrows and uh, making charcoal and so on. And once we reach the next uh, step, uh, should be, well, within short, I guess, this will be low and everything will stop again. So this part is pretty much a closed uh, system. We have charcoal in a buffer chest. Of course, you don't need that one. You can have, you can have the buffer in here, but I prefer to have a few stacks. You can have as many of, as you want in a buffer chest. So yeah, and of course, this doesn't go anywhere, but this would be like the secondary output to the rest of the base, since all of this it requires power and we need a closed loop here somehow. Okay, so how, let's show it how it works. Uh, here I have lots of ores. Here we get all the dust. Um, that one. All right. So now we're getting everything. We get gold. We get, should get it in here. We get our ingots. We're getting extra slag in here, quite a lot of it. You'll probably get more than you need by doing this. Uh, so perhaps you don't need to dump all your ores into this chest, but only what you need to, to maintain the slag production. And on this side, keep the sand stocked, keep the micro stocked, however you need to do it. And now you can see that we have enough power here, so this will go. This is still going because we have some internal steam left in here. Yeah, this one, it will burn up everything here. You can probably limit that if you want to, but there's no need. As long as you stop the production uh, at some point, which will give the, some extra space. If you set it to maximum, then you probably will just burn off lots of energy and it will go to waste. So never set them completely full. Better go halfway or three quarters or something. So I think that's every step, right? We have covered how to get everything. We get dust, we get uh, ingots and these cinnabars can be used for other things. That's why I put a filter here, so the cinnabar won't end up in this system. Because all this depends on each other, it's imperative that you set them up and, uh, and not mess things up. I have no additional chests for overflow or anything like that, so it needs to be perfectly balanced and uh, prevent overflow. I had this minor thing where I removed from here and then I put a few back. Uh, but 
then this part had this machine had sent a few already and by reaching this point this one was we had more than 32 in here already so they ended up in this servo just blocking everything and then the system was completely shut down so make it do be do be careful um, then, then you should be fine but is it worth it if you compare it to some one block tree farms for example well no, I think that's up to you. It's a fun build. Uh, the power output is not extreme, but you can expand it more. We can run it in a higher speed uh, if we, for example, just start this one at the same time as we are running this in full speed. And running this in full speed. Is it still a good system? Will we get enough power to keep everything running? Yes, we'll get enough power to keep it running. But will it be enough power to keep the entire base running? I'm not sure. And once you have come so far to have all of these materials to build all this, uh, is this the best power plant there is? I'm not really convinced uh, about that, but Regardless, it's a fun build and depending on your needs and your or your stock of material, it might be or might not be a good build. I hope this helped. Uh, so thanks for watching if you endured this long and I hope I'll see you in the next one. Take care and bye bye.